Hello GED students, let's go back to applying the concept of substitution. Do you remember when I told you that you can use substitution to guess and check answers? Well, this question says which point lies on the line 3x plus y equals negative 1. Now some of you might be thinking, Kate, you never taught me how to solve this. And I'll let you know that. Do you see how there's two letters, an x and a y well you couldn't solve this for a point if you tried uh, that's kind of the deal here when you have two letters there are multiple answers and so there's many many answers to this and so really our only option here is to guess answers and check and so the key as we said in this diagram here the hint is to know what these answers mean. Do you see the parentheses here? With two numbers inside the parentheses and a comma between them, this is the way that we write coordinate points, basically addresses on a graph. Um, all of that to say, when you write it this way, the first letter is an X value and the second a y value, sorry, I misspoke. The first number is an x value and the second is a y value. Now, knowing that, we can guess one of these points, plug it in for x and y and see if it gives me a true equation. If it does, then that point is on the line that is represented by this equation. So let's do it. First thing I would just beg you to do, you're going to cut down on errors. If you write out the exact equation, expression, or function you've been given before you start your substitution. And that allows you to do that head bobbing that I always encourage, where you look up and down in order to not leave anything out with each new line. And so I'm going to substitute, which means I'm going to basically write this exact same expression as before so that it's exactly equivalent, except for I'm going to trade out the variables for their known values. So according to this point, I know what x is. x is 5. I can see that that x is shoved up against the 3. They're multiplying. I will use parentheses to say so. I will not lose any operations from the original equation, like plus but I will replace those letters, those variables with known values. And I know the value of y, it's negative two. Now I'm gonna use parentheses here as well. You don't have to, but that's to help me distinguish between the plus and the negative there. So that says three times five plus negative two. And we're asking, is that equal? Now I'm asking, is it equal? I'm asking myself a question. You don't have to know how to use the, is it equal to sign? because um, nobody's going to look at your scratch work on the GED, but I'm a mathematician. I write in the language of algebra, so welcome to another verb, the is it equal to verb. All right, well, to figure out if the two sides are equal, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, I need to simplify this left-hand side. I think I'm going to do it by hand. You guys are ready, all right? Remember that according to the order of operations, we're going to multiply, divide before we add, subtract. So I'm going to do the 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15. And I still haven't added that with negative 2. Now, I can just drop down plus negative 2. Don't get me wrong. But I'm such a lazy, lazy mathematician. I know that adding a negative number is the same as just subtracting. Like if I add debt into my account, it basically takes money out of my account. And so I'm going to be a lazy mathematician and I am going to just write instead of 15 plus negative 2, I'm going to write 15 minus 2. Now, if that did not occur to you that those two things are the same, don't worry. Uh, you will get to the same place I do. But I'm asking, is that left-hand side equal to negative 1? And now we can see, of course, if I do 15 minus 2, I get 13. And let's think about it. Ask yourself, is 13 equal to negative 1? Well, no, it's not. 13 is not equal to negative 1. Hey, there's a third verb, not equal to. <laughs> all right, and so all of that to say... A does not check out. And let's just go ahead and erase all that, cross off A and start again. I'm gonna move a little faster. All right, so starting with the original equation, 
every time I highly recommend because I love you guys and I know you make more secretarial issues when you don't just write it out. And now plugging into it, if I plug in this B point, that's the X value, that's the Y value. So my three will stay three. My Y, which is multiplying, I'm sorry, my X, which is multiplying is negative two. My plus will stay plus. My Y value this time is just plain old five. And I'm asking, is that equal to negative one? I don't know, let's simplify the left-hand side and see if it checks out. So three times negative two, well, that's negative six. And I'm asking, I haven't dealt with that plus five yet, and I'm asking if I do that math, negative six plus five, will it give me negative one? And indeed it does. If I owe you six dollars and I have a five, start paying it off, I'm gonna pay down my debt, negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one. I'm only gonna owe you a dollar. And is that equal to negative one? Heck yeah, it sure is, that checks out. This point is on the line. All right, that was really all we needed to do. But uh, obviously, if you if B didn't check out, you'd keep going through C or D. Now, sometimes you guys get nervous on a test, especially when negatives are involved. Highly recommend that you use a calculator for this if that is you, because negatives are the most common errors students make when doing hand calculations. And so... Yeah, it's just good practice, especially if you go through all four, they're all wrong, and then you need to come back to it. Guess, flag, come back to it, deal with your negatives by hand, and, I mean, deal with your negatives in the calculator, and just, um, yeah, we want to do our best for this test, not just prove that we can do things by hand, all right? That's my argument. <laughs> all right, you guys, super proud of you. Happy learning.